Hello, everybody. It's great pleasure for me to be at another DevOps uh, conference. In this talk, I'm going to share with you why I think uh, Dapper project is a 10x uh, framework for your organization. Uh, so I work at Diagrid, where we are building tools and APIs based on Dapper. Before that, I was consultant and architect at Red Hat, where I have used lots, lots of Red Hat middleware projects, such as Apache Camo. Uh, I wrote a book about it. Similarly, I've used uh, Kubernetes more from a developer and user point of view, and I have a book about it. So uh, if you go to this URL, you can grab a free sponsored copy uh, of the second edition of the, of the updated version. <clears throat> also, if you have any questions at the end, I have a few free copies. Uh, you can grab those. Uh, so let's first talk about uh, you know, 10x developer. That term has been around uh, for many decades, actually, and one of the... Uh, all the definitions I would say is the one where 10x developer is somebody who is maybe 10 times better than the worst engineer in the company. But I would say that definition is slightly changing, especially in large organization. That's becoming more uh, somebody who can maybe enable 10 engineers to be better or a whole team in a company uh, to be better. And I would say with frameworks, it is similar. Um, so if you have a, f if you're using some kind of framework, maybe that's making you write code faster. But if that framework is not playing, you know, nicely with the other stakeholders like ops team, so it's not easy to operate, or the it's not aligned with the company vision and the architect's vision about the uh, future, that may not uh, uh, fly, you know, in your organization. And I think Dapper is a project that helps developers to be uh, highly productive, and it enables operations teams to operate applications in production with confidence, and it also gives uh, architects lots of uh, optionality and flexibility. So le let's see that. So I want to look into these uh, three roles and how Dapper helps with those. Um, so if you're a developer, you know, probably have lots of responsibilities. You have to understand uh, in deep the uh, business requirements. You know, you have to maintain legacy applications, run, write brand new Greenfield applications, but specifically if we focus on writing distributed applications, there are certain uh, things that you have to do again and again. For example, you have to do synchronous service interactions. You have to maybe generate events from one application uh, for multiple other applications. If you have some kind of more complex business logic, you will have to orchestrate and coordinate interaction between these services or connect to um, external APIs and endpoints. And Dapper is a, a CNCF project, and it exactly gives these kind of capabilities. But uh, the thing that Dapper does it differently is, rather than offering these uh, capabilities as a library, you know, that you include in your application, instead it runs as a separate process next to your application. That means from your application, you interact with Dapper over its uh, HTTP or gRPC APIs. For example, Dapper has a service-to-service -service invocation API that is similar to a to proxy with service discovery capabilities. It has a state store API, which is similar to Redis's key value access API. You know, it has a publish subscribe, which you can imagine something like a Kafka's pub sub API, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you interact with these APIs from your application uh, over HTTP or gRPC. If you choose HTTP, you may not have any kind of dependency to Dapper in your application, so you can use your uh, languages and runtimes native HTTP capabilities. Or if you want to use gRPC, then you can use one of the SDKs uh, provided for your language. Behind the scene, Dapper is uh, configured and relies on some kind of infrastructure. You know, it can be some kind of key value store, message broker, and uh, other infrastructure. So le let's see some of these APIs. Uh, I've picked here. The first one is service invocation. Let's say service A tries to invoke service B, but rather than calling it directly or using some kind of uh, service discovery, you know, HTTP uh, client or resiliency uh, library, you can use um, the sidecar. So from service A, you can call, call the sidecar, its invoke API and uh, service B and the method you want to call. At this point, Dapper will use its um, name resolution component, so if it's running locally, it will use something like a multicast uh, DNS. If it's on Kubernetes, it will rely on Kubernetes service discovery. On some other environment, you can use you know, Hash HashiCorp's console, etc. So Dapper will use its name resolution. It will encrypt the request uh, 
with MTLS, deliver it to uh, the other sidecar and call the service and give it the result back. And if on the way there are any transient failures, Tuple will retry those. Uh, those. And why would you do that? I would say, in addition to you know service discovery resiliency, what you get is also you know out of the box um, observability and tracing. You can apply additional access control. Uh, you can add other interceptors in the pipeline, for example, O2 uh, based authorization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Le let's see a few more. For example, publish subscribe. So. If you want to do a publish subscribe between different services, um, rather than adding a native client library in your uh, application, you can just call the Dapper sidecar and its publish um, endpoint. At this point, Dapper will use, you know, depending on the configured uh, broker, it will use a broker behind the scene. And on the consumer side, you can subscribe your application um, to specific topics. Then Dapper will write that message in cloud events and will deliver it to the uh, subscribers. And what you will get is first, you'll get a broker agnostic, you know, pops up mechanism, but you get also other capabilities that might not be available on the backing broker. For example, if you're using some kind of a cloud pops up such as SQS, SNS. With Dapper, you would get automatic uh, you know, retries, dead letter topics. You can do bulk operations uh, when you are publishing or when you are consuming the message. You, you can you know, have time to leave, scope these topics to different applications, et cetera, et cetera. The point is you get these capabilities that might not be provided by the actual backing broker, but uh, Dapper implements them uh, at the sidecar level. Um, the third API, the binding. The bindings are basically connectors to external systems, and mm, th they can be, you know, output binding going to external system or input binding uh, coming to uh, uh, getting message from external system to your app. In this example, I have an app that is sending uh, a message using a Twilio. So rather than calling a Twilio API directly, you again you interact with the Dapper sidecar and you get out of the box, you know, resiliency um, and observability. I think the more interesting one here is the input binding, where rather than starting a you know a separate thread that will have to pull an external endpoint, uh, you can have uh, Dapper uh, in the middle. So in this case, Dapper will pull the Twitter API, and when there is a tweet that matches your request, it will forward that to your application. And all you have to do from your application is basically either acknowledge the receipt of that request or reject it uh, uh, for Dapper to uh, process it further. And really, the list uh, goes on. Uh, on and on. There are, you know, state management API, which is a key value access um, uh, API to different data store. There is a configuration API, which you can use to access different uh, configuration endpoints. Uh, secret API for accessing different secret providers, whether that's uh, something like a HashiCorp Vault or, you know, a cloud service uh, back in the secret store, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there uh, you can see there are also other API proposals for a document store, offline uh, uh, processing, database APIs, etc. So this API lets you uh, isolate your applications from each other and external dependencies. Okay, so if these are you know some of the benefits for developers, then what about ops? Uh, uh, as an ops team, you know, probably you are working with uh, multiple teams and multiple projects and you are looking for some kind of uh, uniformity so that you can uh, secure applications, make them more resilient, observable, and you can automate and manage them at scale. Uh, and I've picked here three uh, concrete features from Dapper that helps uh, operations team to manage uh, applications at runtime easily. Uh, the way Dapper enables uh, or operation teams is through its component architecture. So the APIs we've seen is what the developers use to interact with Dapper, but behind the scene, each API can have one or multiple components. And the components are typically configured by the ops team, and they, uh, they contain the connection details to the backing infrastructure, the uh, access control details, the resiliency policies, observability policies, etc. cetera. Uh, so for example, when you are using Dapper, all interactions between the sidecars will, by default, have MTLS. You know, Dapper will issue 
uh, self-signed certificates and distribute them to the sidecars and everything will be encrypted. But you can actually extend that. You know, you can have token-based authentication between the app and the sidecar, so you can secure that part as well. Uh, in addition, you can use an O2 provider to decide which services can call with other services or which services can access which kind of infrastructure. You can scope the Dapper APIs to specific apps, etc. So you really have all options to lock the Dapper down. Uh, in terms of resiliency, you know, we've seen that you can apply some kind of resiliency policies such as timeouts, retries, circuit breakers to service-to-service -service interactions. That's typical, you know, when you do uh, some kind of a service mesh. But with Dapper, you can go back further. You can apply these resiliency policies at the edges of your application. So you can apply resiliency policy when you are interacting with a broker or with a, a key value store or with some kind of external API, and you can uh, apply those uh, resiliency policies at the edges as well. What about observability? Um, so with Dapper, you get, you know, of course, logging metrics and distributed tracing. So you get those without adding any libraries in your application. If you enable those, Dapper will, you know, Dapper will log all interactions with the sidecar. It will expose Prometheus-based uh, metrics, and it will propagate uh, uh, any distributed tracing uh, traces without you having to add any libraries in your application. Uh, and basically, that wraps some of the benefits uh, to operations. Uh, moving on to the architects, um, the way I visualize this is basically if you're a developer, you are probably focused typically on one project at a time where you have to quickly you know, deliver functionality. Ops team, they usually work across multiple teams and projects and automate that. But as an architect, you also, uh, I would say you have one more dimension. So you probably have to have a bit longer term vision uh, that is aligned with your company uh, strategy. So you have to look after multiple teams and longer time frame. And I would say the Dapper is, uh, uh, provides also many benefits to an architect. For example, it, the first thing is it gives you optionality and portability. So when you are designing a solution, uh, if you are using Dapper, you know, and if you are working with multiple teams, you, you will know that you can use specific patterns from Dapper and specific capabilities, regardless of the language and the runtime used by the different teams. You can deploy that application on different clouds, not only deploy, but once you deploy, you know, you can connect to the services on that cloud environment and consume those services. And it's uh, agnostic to your application architecture. So whether that's a monolith or some kind of a legacy legacy system, microservice, and even function, you can use Dapper next to it uh, and interact with it. Uh, upgrades also become much uh, easier, I would say. Um, typically, you would have you know, CVs and upgrades needs uh, at the integration points. So if that is Dapper, upgrading a Dapper-based application uh, is much easier because you are not including any library in your application. So you would just upgrade Dapper and restart your application. As long as the API is not uh, changing, you, you, you don't have to include any dependency in your application, you know, build, run, test, and deploy the whole application. Um, it's uh, non-intrusive, so you do, it doesn't add, it doesn't dictate how your application is run. Yes, it doesn't dictate what's the runtime, what are the dependencies, it sits next to your application. And it's part of uh, CNCF uh, uh, foundation. And of course, there are drawbacks. Uh, in my mind, these are, you know, there's certain mental complexity because it's another process running next to your application. At first, that can be, you know, a bit complex. It adds an additional network latency, which we, with the test run in the upstream community, that's between one and two uh, milliseconds. You know, it has additional over uh, resource overheads. I think it's around 20 or 40 megabytes, the binary size. And debugging and testing is uh, uh, slightly more involved. Uh, but if you look at the you know, upstream uh, momentum, it is today it's probably the ninth uh, fastest growing and active CNCF project with over 21,000 stars and uh, 2,000 contributors. Uh, so in summary, I would say Dapper helps 
architects to design, uh, you know, uh, solutions that have more optionality. It helps uh, reuse and uh, patterns and best practices across teams, projects, and even employers. Uh, one, once the design is done, you know, it helps developers to implement distributed applications faster without reinventing the wheel. Um, and it's uh, in production, it helps operations team to operate these applications uh, more confidently. Um, here are a few links, so you can check Dapper.io to, to see if there is uh, any, anything that uh, Dapper can offer to you. You can check the book website if you want to download a free copy or grab a, a paper coffee. And uh, our website, uh, we are hiring and working on Dapper. Thank you. Thank you.